We're back, everybody. This is Squawk Box on CNBC Europe. We're about nine minutes to the top of the hour. The Ukraine is still facing uncertainty after a tight finish at the polls failed to produce an outright winner this weekend. Both opposition parties are now claiming the right to form a coalition. Prime Minister Yanukovych's party remains in first place with 34.2 percent of the vote, with the coalition of the Ukraine's two main Orange Revolution parties scoring 45 percent between them. Meanwhile, in a move some analysts are interpreting as a message of support for Russian-backed Yanukovych. Gazprom has warned the Ukraine it will cut gas to the country in October if Kiev fails to agree repayments of its energy debts. With more on what we can expect from this story, Brian Best has joined us. He's head of investment banking at Dragon Capital. Brian, welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to be here. I presume you've got investments and interests in the Ukraine which is why we're talking to you this morning. That's right, yes. Good, okay, just to clarify that for the audience. On, on the, um, let's just deal with the Gazprom issue first here. Um, why, why now? I mean, assuming that there are some debts from the, the state gas business that, that Gazprom feels are owed, the timing is quite interesting as to why they feel it must be repaid now, otherwise they're going to cut off supplies. Well, it's, it's naturally a knee-jerk reaction, political jockeying, if you will. Uh, you know the the Orange Coalition, uh, you know, winning a uh, uh, majority uh, in Parliament uh, sent uh, signals to uh, Russia that uh, the Yanukovych party is going to be uh, less uh, favorable. Relations with Russia could uh, cool uh, a little bit uh, after the this recent political uh, election. So, yeah, I mean, how serious is the uh, the impact on business actually in the Ukraine from what happens at a political level because sometimes it's hard to see that it makes much difference at all yeah it's an interesting uh, question and, and you're right to ask it uh, what we've seen uh, ever since 2004 when we had the presidential election that kicked off uh, the uh, political crisis in Ukraine uh, we've seen the capital markets you know practically detach themselves from politics uh, altogether uh, in 2004 and the run-up to the presidential session, we had uh, almost 200 percent growth in, in the equity markets. And the two years subsequent, uh, 45, 50 percent growth in equity markets. This year, we're up uh, over 100 percent uh, in equity markets in Ukraine. Uh, so no matter really what happens in, in the political scene, because we've been in a status of, of practically constant uh, political crisis uh, since 2004, mm. the markets have performed quite well. Mm. How concerned uh, should one be about the, um, the the Russian effect? I mean, you know, clearly Gazprom appears to be, if we take the political story and run with it, it's a warning shot, isn't it? I mean, will there be a deterioration of relations with Russia if the Orange Party is in the driving seat in this coalition? Uh, th there could be a slight deterioration of relationship between Russia and Ukraine, but on the other hand, there will be a strengthening of relations with Western Europe, which I think will play a nice balancing uh, act uh, here, um, you know, but uh, I think that uh, Yulia Tymoshenko's uh, party uh, learned a valuable lesson uh, after uh, they were ousted from uh, parliament, uh, from from the government uh, last time. Uh, I think that they will be much more amicable to their Russian neighbors uh, mm. this this time around. Mm. If um, we are seeing, you know, as you say, uh, closer integration into Europe, how is that going to change the investment case? for the Ukraine going forward? I think it's a, it's a clear signal to, to investors, uh, mostly coming from the West anyway, uh, that uh, Ukraine is, uh, is open for business, uh, that the country is going to continue uh, its uh, reform program uh, probably more aggressively than, uh, than it would have uh, had uh, the Party of Regions uh, gained a majority in, in Parliament. So I think it's going to be a positive sign uh, to the West. How, how vulnerable um, is the Ukraine to a, a, t a downturn in interest in emerging markets more broadly, and, and has it suffered at all from this uh, re-rating of risk that we've talked about in the wake of the credit crunch? Yeah. Um, no, it, it really hasn't. Uh, the markets have stayed uh, fairly resilient uh, to the global uh, turmoil that we've seen in, in recent months. Um, I think, in fact, it could have a positive effect on Ukraine. I see the investors are still looking for, for growth stories. 
Uh, they're still looking for high yields. Uh, Ukraine's risk profile hasn't changed that much vis-a-vis uh, -vis what's happening uh, in, in the West. So uh, I think that uh, it could actually spur uh, more investment uh, in the region as investors look, continue to look for, for good growth. Fundamentally, Ukraine is still still quite strong. Yeah. Okay. Nice to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very for much. coming in. Brian be Best with us this morning from Dragon Capital.